Good morning again. Um, so when you think of sports, you usually don't think of recycling materials. You think of the Dallas Cowboys, you don't think of recycling materials, the Houston Rockets, it's saving water and stuff like that. Those two things don't interact. But ever recently, people are looking at the environmental impact that sports are playing on the environment. So that's why today I want to introduce to you um, sustainable sports, um, how league certified stadiums are coming into America. And by the way, my name is Emmanuel Olivier. So the first thing, exactly what is LEAD? LEAD stands for Leadership in Energy and in Environmental Design. It first started off by the United States Green Building Council. There's three men um, pictured right here, Mr. Um, Rick Fergizzi, Mr. Uh, David Gottfried, and Mr. Mike Italiano decided to come together and look at buildings across America and see how they um, looked at how the buildings affected the environment. And they decided to make a rating system so that they could reward the buildings that um, were cognizant of the environmental impact that they have. And it started off small, but now it's grown to be in America and 30 other countries. And now they have a multitude of standards instead of looking at just the overall greenness of a building. So the, there's six league qualifications. Um, picture here is the league scorecard for Levi Stadium, the home of the San Francisco 49ers in Santa Clara. Um, you have sustainable sites, water efficiency, um, energy and atmosphere, uh, material and resources, indoor environmental quality, and the innovation in the way that you uh, present your lead stadium to be uh, uh, energy efficient. So then with all this being said, like why is it important? Why is it that sports decided to get involved into um, being lead certified? And there's this quote here from Mr. Gary Glaw uh, that I like to read um, of the Minnesota Twins. It says, professional sports and sports in general has so much influence on the general public. Even when times are tough, people still invest money in it. Being the public eye and showing leadership and sustainability is just the right thing to do. So I would like to highlight a couple of stadiums that have just, just do that. They were the first and either, I'm, I'm looking at the ma major three sports of the NFL, the NBA, and um, the MLB, and to show why exactly that they were one of the major stadiums to be lead certified. So the first is being the first ever stadium in America to be lead certified was the Nationals Park in um, Washington, D.C., home of the Washington Nationals. They were certified in 2008, and they received the LEED Silver Building Certification, which is the second, uh, actually the third highest now, um, only under uh, Gold and Platinum Certification. Um, but they were able to reduce their usage of water by 30%, and not only that, they were able to make it where their the location of the ballpark is accessible to like transit through the Metro Rail, with the, which is inside Washington, and through the bus routes that are available as well. And then the landscape which they have is very drought resistant, and it requires very limited um, irrigation. And the way that they planted the plants, they made sure to like plant plants that don't require um, a sprinkler system to go. So they've completely eliminated the use of sprinkler systems within their uh, budget. The next is going to be American Airlines Center Arena of the uh, Miami Heat. Um, they were certified in 2009, and their certification came uh, for them to be the first NBA stadium to be an existing building that was certified for LEED certification. So that means that the building was already built, but they made improvements of it to make sure that it would be more, um, more energy efficient and sustainable. So um, they used 26.5% less energy. Um, they have a, higher, a highly solar reflective um, roof material that produces a, a heat island effect. Um, within the stadium so that they don't even need to use air conditioning within their whole entire um, Their whole entire building complex. It just completely eliminates it by the amount of heat that is produced on top of the roof um, And then they were reduced water usage by 16.7% uh, in comparison to their first certification Which they had gotten in 2009, but when they got recertified last year in 2015 They were able to reduce their amount of water even more and then lastly, they have a reheat delivery program. And the reheat delivery program is they take the unused concession foods like at the end of the games, and they're able to take them across to the different homeless shelters within Miami and feed the general public by doing um, their reheat delivery program. <coughs> and then the first NFL stadium to be um, recert to be lead certified actually, actually happens to be the first NFL stadium to ever be created within America. And that is the Soldier Field in Chicago, uh, home of the Chicago Bears. They were certified in 2012, and um, they also they just received the basic lease certification for existing buildings. 
Um, and all they did was simply just repurpose their soil and sod for when, whenever they have a concert or if they do play a game, they were just able to reuse it and refertilize it so that they can be able to uh, to keep, not eat, um, import more soil and sod. And then if you lose your cell phone or your eyeglasses at the game, chances are you won't find them again because they just send those off to get recycled. <laughs> um, and then they also recycle their office supplies, which they have in their front office. So these are just the first within all these sports, but I kind of want to take a closer look at some of the ones that are um, also present now, such as Levi Stadium, or my bad, excuse me, the NBA Toyota Center, which is a hometown. I, I picked this one in here because it's sort of a hometown hero. Even though the Rockets are not as good as they should be, their stadium <laughs> does, um, is very renowned in the way that they're um, being able to be sustainable. Um, it's the first stadium in Texas to be LEED certified, and they received LEED Silver for existing building certification by updating their facilities to reduce um, landscape watering requirements by 50%. Um, they have a green cleaning program that they use not only for themselves, but they go out into the communities and introduce green um, activities for um, students within the school districts, and they um, educate, as I said, educate the community about going green. So Levi Stadium, home of the San Francisco 49ers, just recently this year hosted Super Bowl 50, which was a momentum, momentous Super Bowl as it's being 50 years of playing such a great game. Uh, might be a little biased, not opinion, but uh, they were able to conserve water, and not only that, if you, uh, you look closely, um, they they got a lot of their food that they used for the Super Bowl um, from local food growers. But if you look closely, right about here, these are all solar panels, and then right here is a solar bridge. It's really renowned because the way that they were able to not even use any energy, like they didn't have to use any electricity or any energy to fund the Super Bowl, because they took the amount of energy that they produced in the years before to be able to um, have through the solar panels that they use to be able to. Uh, to power the Super Bowl, so therefore they weren't even, everything they were doing was off of reserves that they had accumulated throughout the whole entire year. And they do this every year at the point where they just accumulate more energy from their solar panels so that there's no need for them to even use energy for the eight home games that they have each season. Um, and then lastly, looking at the future and how stadiums will try to increase their lease, um, their lease certification and be more sustainable is the Mercedes-Benz Stadium, um, which is currently being built now in Atlanta. Um, home of the Atlanta Falcons, they're actually trying to go for the platinum certification, which is around 81 points of um, lead certification. So they're trying to hit to the point where they like only miss one point in about each category. Um, and they have um, sustainability features as electric charging stations. If you look closely here in this diagram, this is like the tailgating area. But in this tailgating area, they're going to put in a sustainable garden which tailgaters can go in and get the fruits and the specials that they need for their tailgating and just use that within, um, without having to go in and import stuff or buy stuff from concessions and stuff like that. Um, they will have a five-story LED lighting board, which is very renowned as we saw in other presentations as LEDs are more energy efficient than just using the normal light bulbs. And then the roofs that they have here will become retractable and they are trying to do it where they systematically time it so that when they open a roof, they can make it to the right temperature um, opposed to having uh, a running air conditioning unit the whole entire time. So with that being said, um, that is the end of my presentation. I'd like to open up the floor to any questions that anybody might have. Well, so as, as you discussed at the beginning of your presentation, there are a lot of different categories, whether it's um, uh, how you use your energy, your water, your building materials, um, uh, indoor environmental quality, sustainable sites. Um, from the perspective of the player's experience, what features do you think would be most important in, um, uh, in a lead certified stadium? And then contrast that with the fans experience. Okay. So I think the best thing as a, as a player for you like to be in a lead certified stadium is as long as the the material that you're playing on or like the surface and the heat, as long as it feels like it's normal conditions, that's what like a lot of the the um, the owners are trying to do is make sure that it feels just as normal as you playing on like any, you know, different surface, is that it feels that way to the players so that it doesn't like, you know, even when we're using reuse soil and they're trying to still make sure that it's like the same quality that you would use if you're playing on like a brand new field so that the players don't have a, a different experience. And then for the fans, they want to make it to the point where it's so, 
that it's to the point where you don't even know you're being more sustainable by just coming to a game. Like they're introducing programs, they believe that it might take a while for you to get over the hump, but um, at the University of Missouri with their tailgaters, what they did is they um, brought tailgating bags and they put it into the um, area so that they could learn how to recycle. And it took them a while to get it, but once people started to get those tailgating bags, it started to become second nature. They expected that from the whole entire system. So that's what many of the owners are trying to do is they're going to introduce it into the system and implement it, and then before you know it, people will just start following them along. So I, this is a good answer, and um, one of the things I've heard in conversation with um, a player is uh, that players are particularly sensitive to uh, whether the, the field is retaining heat or not. Um, uh, I've, I've learned from this player that uh, you know, if you fall down on the field, it's really hot outside. You know, it's really going to hurt your skin. Yeah. You get you know, blisters. You'll dehydrate quickly. Uh, are there are there technologies for the field that help with that urban heat island effect? Yeah, I think I think what they're going to do for that is like I was talking about the retractable roof, yeah. um, so that they can like be able to not only just within the air around, they'll be able to like do things so that the ground doesn't absorb as much heat and that's just that's also using different soils and stuff like that so that it won't be able to do it and then a lot of units are now a lot of stadiums are now using um uh, actually cooling systems underneath the field i know the university of oregon they're actually introducing into like the future years led lights inside their field but they're also having like a, a cooling unit within their field too because like as you like you said you're running as an athlete your feet are on fire and that's not one of the things that you want to do as playing your games so. One of the criticisms of LEED is that it considers energy efficiency, but it looks at a lot of other things. And people who specifically want to reduce energy or carbon footprint say, do we need to focus more in that way? Do you, from your looking, you've looked at a number of stadiums and their performance. Do you think they're getting the best they could do with energy efficiency, or would they do more if it was single-mindedly focused on energy? I think, I think taking off the fact that it's sustainable I think energy efficiency is a good thing for you to focus on, but I don't think it's the only thing. I think if you're being sustainable, you're trying to make it so that future generations can be able to enjoy an earth that's you know just as good as when you got it. You're not detrimenting the earth. You're probably improving it and everything. So I think energy efficiency is a good thing, but also you know making aware, making the community aware of how they can be more energy efficient or making you know how they can be more go green. I think that is a good thing that lead does that. I feel if they didn't do that, we'd be lacking in some areas as far as like you know the younger generation coming up. So I do I, would, I do believe that it's they're they're heading in the de right direction. So I guess as far as the efficiency, efficiency, I think it's a good yeah a good approach. Um, you said like uh, you're thinking about like the future of enforcing policies on like these stadiums or yeah see that's what that's one of the things that I've never I didn't really see is that like I've noticed that a lot of the times like it's sort of like oh we'll do it like they're kind of doing it at the good graces of their heart there's not like you know like somebody saying hey we need y'all to be more sustainable and stuff like that like I don't think necessarily America in general we're just still like caught off the fact that oh yeah we're just going to go to a sporting event we're trying to like separate the two of them from being each other instead of holding them to the same criteria as we do like the big corporations I mean, because the NFL is a big corporation. It owns a day of the week. I mean, Sunday is, you know, NFL day, and there's peoples all around the country just going to, you know, these games. And we don't hold them to the same standards as you do big corporations of making sure that they're energy efficient and stuff like that. So I think in the recent, in these coming years, there's going to be some more policy changes to make sure that NFL stadiums are uh, uh, green and energy efficient as well. Thanks.